Hey, good morning. Got another rainy day. It's uh, pretty relentless at the moment, and so today's plan is we're going to get some grafting done. So, in terms of grafting, what we use, we've got a, a regular grafting knife. We're spending the money getting a good quality one that's got uh, high carbon content because that will stay a lot sharper for a lot longer. So you've got right-handed, left-handed grafting knives, probably know in terms of one side, I'm right-handed, so the side away from me has a something of a, a chamfer on it like that so that when you're cutting down the wood if you're doing a side graft of some description you can hold the knife like that and that edge is parallel to the wood so you can come down rather than if it was sharp on the same both sides you'd end up if you weren't careful going too far into the wood or trying to correct it be wobbling like that, making an uneven surface. So it's just at an angle in that way. But today doing I think what's termed as a wedge graft. So for a wedge graft I like to use a knife that's got the same angle both sides. Now you can either have a second grafting knife and sharpen that in that manner or use an old knife because the old knives have traditionally had a, a lot better quality more uh, carbon first thing we do is give them a sharpen so once you get used to it it's relatively easy to maintain that angle so long as you go slow you're not putting a massive amount of pressure on. Nice steady flow, nice steady angle, and then the other side. This is your old fashioned bone handled butter knife. Sheffield steel, really high carbon content, and it certainly does the job. For us. Then go down to a, well, I go down to a very fine grade, just puts a nice sort of polished edge. Part of the problem with uh, a lot of your tropical fruit trees, I may have said before, is the amount of uh, latex sap that you have in, hence they build up a lot of rubbish on your tools and also your sharpening stones. As I've said, we've dipped these in uh, methylated spirits and when you take them out, just put a light to it and it'll burn off. I'll have it to cool down before you start using it. For the secateurs, because it's such a tight angle, you wouldn't really get a, a stone in there, so I just use this flat steel. But because this is a bit of an angle, just on the other side, just to take off any fur, and leave it nice and sharp. Again, this one into the methylated spirits. And then we're all good. So those are the two things, two types of knife that we use in secateurs, sharpening. Uh, I'm going to go down now and collect some wood. Okay, so we're back. We've collected um, the wood of the pardon tree, strip away any excess leaves, 
that we don't want. And again, it's all about trying to work out the right sort of thickness wood that will marry up to the uh, rootstock. I'm going to say about here. So back to the uh, grafting knife. Trying to line up the middle and then one nice steady cut like so. Rock it backwards and forwards if it's too tight or as it were slide down like that to continue the cut. Sometimes just pushing won't quite do it. So then the scion wood sort of an equal length cut so hopefully you can see this we've created a wedge like that that then is going to go in there and Grafting tape, which buy that from a decent uh, gardening type shop. You want some with a little bit of stretch in there. Go around the wood. Bring it up like so. You want a little bit of tension, make sure it's lined up and then pull it nice and tight. The sides are lined up so then the cambium layer is lined up. If you don't want too many big leaves on, light trim. That will reduce the amount of transpiration. And then that's it. Move on to the next one. And just, again, each one needs to be equal size. Line up both sides. If you can't quite get both sides, make sure you've got one side. But if it's the same diameter, it shouldn't be too bad. So it's a little bit of a bow there, and that will keep that in place. Then... A week to two weeks, fingers crossed, we'll start to see new ships pushing. Don't be disheartened, I mean, I spent months and months failing, grafting, failing, grafting, failing. And I think to a certain degree the success starts to come when you get more, as it were, confident maybe. And then you get a little bit slicker at doing it, so you become faster doing it without rushing. But just that confidence. Different trees, I think, require different types of grafts. So experiment with different grafts with whatever you're doing to find out which one's going to be more successful for you. But this seems to work for us. Hi, everyone. Today I am going to try and do some propagation of jackfruits. Ideally, that would be grafting. Um, they are notoriously hard to propagate. And the most success that we've had has been field grafting. But the problem with field grafting is if it's rainy, um, then that can really affect them because they're out in the open, obviously. So we've done some grafting in the nursery and we have had success with that in the past, but not as good as when we field graft. But anything's better than nothing. We really, really need to fill these rows. We want more trees. Um, so we did some field grafting last week and there was no rain predicted. And lo and behold, the very next day after we grafted, it poured down. 
So I really don't know how those grafts are going to do, unfortunately. Um, we've done some nursery grafting, but I thought that maybe I would have a go with some cuttings. Now, it's not known to be hugely successful to do cuttings, but again, I think um, whatever we can do is of benefit. And even if we only get 10% or 20% to work, well, it's still trees. So down in the jackfruit orchard, I've come to select some wood, some material. Um, so what I'm looking for is material that is showing some really strong figure. Um, but what I don't want is um, to use cuttings where the um, buds have already poshed. So you can see here, this would have once been a little bud and it's already poshed, it's already gone. So that's not what I want. Um, I need the sections where there isn't um, ones that have poshed. So you can probably see just on the camera there that just between um, the stem here and the leaf, there's a tiny little bud there. So that is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for strong, vigorous material that hasn't already poshed, um, but has a little bud that's waiting to posh. Um, this is a little bit of an experiment for us because we haven't done cuttings before because we've always known them to be um, quite unsuccessful from the research that we've done, but um, we thought we'd give it a go. So um, it's, a, it's an experiment because I'm not really sure um, whether I should be going for the young wood that's still green or some of the more harder wood. Um, so that will be a test and what I might do is um, some of both and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've started to prepare some of these cottons because this is just an experiment at this stage. We've just started off small with a couple of these little mini greenhouses and we'll just see what happens. So what I've got is some of these little biodegradable pots um, and I filled them with a mix of cutting soil and propagating sand. So I did about two thirds of the soil and about a third of the sand and then I've just filled these little pots. That means we won't have to transplant them if they work. They can just be potted up in those little pots if they take root. Bought up my material from the trees. So this is all what I've cut off. And the reason that I've cut this off is because as you can see, the buds have already poshed. Um, so this is no good for me. So then ones I've cut off and these are the ones that we've got so if I just show you, I've done a mixture of some younger wood and some older wood just to see what happens. Um, and about that length. So you can see there, there's a little bud just inside that leaf that's wanting to posh. And then with the cut end, I've popped that into a rooting liquid called Clonex for hardwood cuttings. And then once they've sat in there for a little minute while I prepare all the cuttings, then I'll transfer them to these little pots and I'll just mist them with sprayer. So it's just got water. I decided to leave some leaves on, but I have cut them, as you can see, so that they don't lose too much evaporation. Um, some people will take all the leaves off. Um, so I don't know. This is an experiment. I don't know what works best. 
um, but we'll see. I thought I'd try this way first. So I've left some leaves on, but I have cut them. And then I'll just spray them. And hopefully these little um, mini greenhouses will build up enough humidity. And fingers crossed. Okay, so all of my little jackfruit cuttings are in their little greenhouses. And already I put some water in the bottom, um, which should be drawn up by the pots and should also help to keep the humidity up. And you can already see um, that the sides of the greenhouses are starting to form condensation. I sprayed all the leaves with water and I've closed the vents. So we'll see how they go, but there they are. So my little jackfruit cuttings, if you could grow some nice healthy roots, that would make me very happy. I really hope that some of my cuttings work. I'm optimistic, but that's probably because I've only just done them and they all look so good. <laughs> I don't know how they'll look in a week or two weeks time, who knows, but we'll see what happens. Um, but if anybody is watching this video that is a very successful jackfruit propagator, please leave a comment below. <laughs> with any tips or tricks that you may have or anything that you think I did incorrectly or could have done better I would really really appreciate it okay thanks for watching guys see you next time